guys and welcome back to Biolog. Hope you're having a great day and a great week. In this video, we're going to be looking at a highly requested topic for the IGCSE Biology Study Design or Syllabus Changes for 2023. So if you are a student in 2023 taking the IGCSE Bio exam, make sure to stay tuned because I have a huge playlist of videos coming up with specific topic-based content for especially the newer topics that have been added to the study design for next year. So make sure you stay subscribed to Biolog and click on post notifications. And also, I have a free resource for you guys. So if you guys want to follow the specific topics and concepts that I'm going to be going through in this video, make sure to click on the link in the description box for a document that will guide you through it. And without further ado, let's begin. Just a bit of a disclaimer here, I will be looking at my phone for some of the parts of this video because I have some specific notes on what has been removed and what has been newly added to the study design next year, so excuse me for that. But starting off with the topic of excretion. Now in excretion, the things that have been removed are kidney dialysis and kidney transplant. So essentially, you wouldn't need to know things like the difference between kidney dialysis and kidney transplant or the advantages and disadvantages of kidney dialysis and kidney transplants. Now this was a very commonly assessed topic in um, past papers. Like if you open up past papers for IGCLC Bio, you will see like this has been a very commonly assessed topic in terms of like, you know, three or four markers for short answer and sometimes there were regularly MCQs that would come on this. but. One good thing is you don't need to know about it anymore. So whenever you are doing past papers, if you're a student in the 2020 through, uh, 2023 study design, and if you're doing past papers, make sure you don't do these um, you know, paper questions that I'm giving you on the topics which have been removed. Moving on, we also have the topic of drugs, right? Now, a major, major portion of this topic which was misused drugs, so things like narcotics, um, heroin, smoking, alcohol, misuse drugs. Essentially, the topic, entire concept of misuse drugs has been completely removed. It was a huge topic in the previous uh, syllabus. And the only thing that's left in the study design is antibiotics. Now, I absolutely love this topic. I think it's a great addition to the IGCSE biology syllabus next year. And I'm pretty sure you guys will also enjoy learning about this topic. Um, so the things that you need to know on this topic are, for example, antibiotic and its uses. What exactly is it used for? What exactly is it not used for? For instance, antibiotics are only effective against bacterial infections or bacteria and they cannot be used to treat viral infections. You will also need to know about um, antibiotics and bacterial resistant to antibiotics. So resistance to antibiotics in terms of natural selection. Now this was something that I in fact had to learn this year because I did an exam for biology where there was a new syllabus uh, incorporated for students this year. So I have a lot of experience when it comes to, um, you know, being a student of a new study design and having to, you know, have new experiences like that because you don't have a lot of resources to guide you in terms of like what is going to come up in the exam, especially if it is a new syllabus. So I am with you guys on this one. and. I have some specific tips that are going to be coming up in future videos, so stay tuned for that. Moving on to human reproduction. Now, in human reproduction, I don't think there's a lot that has been removed, but um, there's things like, for example, here's a list of things that has been removed from human reproduction. The birth process has been removed, fetal development has been removed, so, you know, everything from like the germinal stage, embryonic stage. Um, all of those fetal development stages and their you know weeks in terms of the trimesters for pregnancy has been removed so birth process fetal development has been completely removed contraceptives have been completely removed so contraceptive methods like condoms femidoms um, contraceptive pills um, hormones etc everything like that has been removed you will also have steroids that has been removed Breast milk versus bottle milk, advantages and disadvantages has been completely removed. That was also a pretty big topic in um, the previous past papers. So there was always, I clearly remember there's always a question about um, breast milk for three marks, like the advantages of um, having like breast milk and you know what immunity it gives, for example, etc. So that has been completely removed. Specifics of sp uh, sexually transmitted diseases like HIV and AIDS has been completely removed, but there has been one thing that still um, is present in the syllabus and that is the structure of the HIV virus. It is pretty simple and self-explanatory because it's quite similar to all the other virus types in terms of its structure. 
so that's one thing that has um, you know still kind of been prevalent in the study design so HIV virus structure is still there and you also need to know that it's a sexually transmitted disease so its transmission mode uh, is essentially via blood transfusions so uh, bodily fluid contact for example etc now one thing I found very interesting and kind of questionable was the fact that they added COVID-19 into the uh, syllabus next year so why I think this is questionable is because it's rather like a sensitive topic to talk about in terms of a short answer question. I genuinely don't think you guys will get a question that has the name COVID-19 in it because there are some ethical concerns regarding um, whether like examiners can put that because there might be some like you know impacts that it has had on students and so some students might feel uncomfortable by including that. So. A way that this can come though in the exam is for example they might take a different disease and that is similar to COVID, a respiratory disease for example and they might give you a scenario like oh for example um, tuberculosis is a respiratory disease that is airborne and um, transmits via droplet transmission. Um, there has been a vaccine that has been developed for this. Explain the advantages and disadvantages of a vaccine or explain how having a vaccine and booster shots provide herd immunity or reduce the rate of transmission of a disease or reduce the mor mortality and morbidity rates of that disease in the community. Something like that can easily come. It's just that the name COVID-19 would not specifically be tested. I mean, it's very unlikely to be tested and even if it does, it's probably not going to come up with that much of like importance on the name itself. They will give you the same concept, but I'm pretty sure that name is not going to be. This is something that I'm very, very happy about. This entire topic of lymphatic system has been completely removed. So you guys wouldn't have to learn about things like the thymus, the spleen, and like, you know, primary lymphoid uh, systems and like secondary lymphoid organs, things like that. So the entirety of the lymphatic system has been removed from your guys' syllabus. Um, the things like surgical treatment, so for coronary heart disease in the previous syllabus, there was things like angioplasty that we had to learn, putting a stent into the coronary heart um, vessel, which would expand it, allowing for greater blood flow, things like that. So treatments for coronary heart disease has been completely removed from the study design. Another very important thing, malaria and sickle cell anemia connection has been completely removed. So if you go in past papers and you see questions about the HBS allele, um, HBS, HBA genotype and it's linked to malaria or sickle cell anemia questions where they ask about how sickle cell anemia changes the um, tertiary structure of the hemoglobin protein and that's what causes the um, RBC's shape to change, right? So if you see questions like that, completely ignore it because it's not going to be in your syllabus and it's not going to be tested as a short answer question in your exam next year. Moving on, we also have the topic of human nutrition. So in human nutrition, the only thing that's remaining about dental care is the tooth structure. So tooth structure and um, things like types of tooth. So the two main things that are remaining in dental care is tooth structure and types of tooth. Things like the process of tooth decay is completely removed, um, including protein deficiency diseases like marasmus and kwashiorkor that was very prevalent in the previous study design. Um, if you guys know my past paper video on paper 4, then you guys would know that this was one of the questions that I discussed there about uh, the difference between what kwashiorkor is and what marasmus is, but you guys, if you're doing the 2023 study design, you wouldn't need to know that, so that's good. However, a new topic has been added about um, monoculture and livestock uh, management. So monoculture and livestock management is a new topic that has been added onto the human ecosystem topic that was previously there in the study design. Moving on to the kind of last um, topic that really has gotten a change in the study design is biotech and genetic engineering. Now this is one of my absolute favorite topics. I It is so interesting and I think that you guys will actually enjoy this topic a lot. The, this topic has been combined. So biotech and genetic engineering used to be two separate topics, but now both of these topics have been combined. And the newest addition to this um, topic is protein synthesis. So you guys will learn about 
protein synthesis in much more depth in terms of likely in terms of transcription, translation, post transcriptional modifications like RNA processing, etc. So I will have a detailed video coming about all of these topics which are new in the study design. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, do make sure to like, share and subscribe to Biolog to stay tuned for all of those new videos that are coming up. I will also be adding new videos to my past paper series. So I'll be making up questions that are likely to come based on the newer topics and compiling them to make new videos for you guys in the past paper series. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And leave me a comment on what video suggestions you might like to see in the future. And that's it. So I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.